Hello, I am Professor Yash Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Hello, uh, let us continue our discussion on uh, uh, state of stress in two dimensions. Uh, what we have just uh, looked at so far is we try to kind of uh, derive an expression for the uh, for getting the principal stresses in plane stress condition or in two dimensions on an uh, oblique plane. That means uh, we are trying to find uh, an equation uh, which will help us to find the principal stresses as a function of any orientation. That is all we are trying to do. I will just quickly uh, review what we have seen yesterday and then we would like to continue further. Okay. So, if you look at what we have just seen yesterday is like uh, quickly I will just go through. We have taken this kind of uh, a geometry to describe this and then we have taken a wedge out of this uh, square member and then we looked at uh, the forces which is uh, normal to this oblique plane. So then we try to do the uh, force balancing because we assume the strength of materials assumes that this is uh, the member is in the equilibrium uh, and then we try to calculate the force equilibrium from each side I mean for a normal stress as well as the shear stress and then from there we calculated the expression for um, normal stress and shear stress in a general manner. So, this is what we have just done yesterday. Okay. So, these two equations uh, or I, I would say three equations um, are uh, very basic equations. Once we have this equation uh, ready, then as you can see that we can do lot of manipulation to get uh, different quantities. For example, we are all interested or especially in the theory of yielding and so on or metaforming the you know the the stress uh, where it is maximum for example uh, principal planes where uh, the stress which is acting we are characterizing as principal stress and the maximum shear stress which plane we have to identify so these are all the some of the um, benefits of uh, looking at all these uh, equations in detail so this we will see one by one then again uh, we just uh, discussed about these uh, four points uh, about the uh, the relation between the normal stress and shear stress and uh, the maximum and the minimum values of normal stress on an oblique plane through point O occur when the shear stress is 0 just we looked at all these points and the maximum and the minimum values of both normal stress and shear stress occur at an angle which are 90 degree apart. So, this also we have just witnessed yesterday. The maximum shear stress occurs at an angle halfway between maximum and minimum normal stress. There was a uh, typo error yesterday here. So, it was uh, maximum and minimum normal stress. So, that is what also is showing in this image. And finally, the variation of normal stress and shear stress occurs in the form of a sine wave. So, we are saying witnessing that as usual. So, we discussed that and um, and we were trying to calculate uh, the, the principal planes uh, from these equations. Um, no shear stress that means the principal stress wherever the principal stress is acting on a principal plane there is no shear stress and its angular relationship with respect to x y coordinate axis can be found out from this. Uh, shear stress equations that means uh, I will just go back. So, this equation we are talking about. So, this and then we have taken this uh, relation and then we are trying to manipulate that and then if you rearrange these equations and then you get this tan 2 theta is equal to 2 tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y which gives a 
idea of you know where the principal plane could be and I just mentioned yesterday that you can use uh, uh, this on a this right angle triangle like this this is 2 theta so then you can find out the um, hypotenuse values using this relation uh, by as per the Pythagoras theorem then you can see that uh, sin 2 theta and cos theta value can be readily found out from this. So, very simple step and then what is the use of finding this? If you can find this sin 2 theta and cos 2 theta then we can plug these values uh, into the, the general expression uh, which we have derived for sigma x prime and uh, sigma y prime for uh, finding out the, the principal stresses on an oblique plane. So, that is what we have seen yesterday and this is the final expression substituting this uh, sin and cos values in equation 1 results in the expression for maximum and minimum principal stresses for a two dimensional state of stress. So, this equation gives that and also uh, we stopped somewhere in, in this uh, discussion. Um, uh, what we are interested is uh, to find out the, the plane of normals, you know, the orientation of a normal stress or a principal stress, okay, or a normal stress which contains both uh, a shear and normal component how to find the uh, plane orientation that is what we were discussing. So, for that we uh, take this diagram where it shows the biaxial stress sigma x and sigma y and then this is a diagonal uh, shear stress and uh, as, the con as per the convention this sigma x is always greater than sigma y uh, that is even if it is a three dimension that uh, sigma 2 will be greater than sigma 3. So, that is a convention. So, the figure shows a simple way to establish the direction of largest principal stress sigma 1. Sigma 1 will lie between the algebraically largest normal stress and the shear diagonal. To see this intuitively consider that if there are there were no shear stress then sigma x is equal to sigma 1. So, if there is no shear stress then we are talking about this direction right, this direction. So, and if it is completely, uh, it is only shear stress then it is this direction right, normal to the stress along the shear diagonal. If both normal and shear stress act on this element then sigma 1 lies between and the influences of these two somewhere here. So, this is a nice way of uh, looking at where the sigma 1 will be and, um, and we are interested in maximum shear stress right. So, especially you know in theory of fielding sigma max is uh, tau max I would say is very important um, parameter where you know the yielding uh, takes place and in, we will discuss that in detail in uh, yielding theory and so on. Uh, to find out the maximum shear stress we differentiate the expression of uh, tau x prime y prime what we have the same equation what we have been using and set this equal to 0. Um, so, this is what we get and this you can just uh, rewrite in this form tan 2 theta s is equal to sigma y minus sigma x by 2 tau x y and this can be rewritten like this for our convenience because uh, we have another expression uh, for two, tan 2 theta right just before we have just seen uh, where it was giving some uh, angular relationship for the principal planes right. So, so that tan 2 theta was uh, describing the angular relationship for the normal stress and this is for a shear stress ok. So, we can now compare these two, um, comparing this with the angle at which the principal planes occur that is equation 4. We see that tan 2 theta s that is uh, tan 2 theta representing the maximum shear is negative reciprocal of tan 2 normal ok. So, this is a negative reciprocal of 
this means that 2 theta s and 2 theta n it should be supposed to be n 2 theta s and 2 theta n are separated in space by 45 degree. So, you see that uh, by looking at these expressions which is also uh, gives a very nice idea about the orientation between these two planes. We have also physically seen that you know how these uh, two are separated, but these equations also uh, prove that uh, the orientation between these two uh, stresses. Okay, so that's that is uh, anyway. This is a permanent correction I will make. So it will be n. It's supposed to be it should be read as an n. So, what is the maximum uh, shear stress? The magnitude. The magnitude is given by tau max is equal to plus or minus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y whole square to the power half. So, this, this expression is important and uh, we will now move on to something. Um, a new way of representing the uh, stress as a strain. So, very useful graphical method for representing a state of stress at a point on an oblique plane through a point suggested by um, Mohr. Okay, this a scientist suggested uh, this methodology. So, it is called Mohr circle. So, what does it uh, convey? But before we go go into the details of what this Mohr circle means. Uh, what we will do is we will take uh, I have just written an expression here. How do we got this expression? I hope you all will have the familiarity with these terms. What I have done is you have the uh, the two dimensional principle uh, stress expressions and the shear stress expressions right uh, for an arbitrary orientation. So, what we have done is uh, we have taken the 2 theta terms are one side and the non 2 theta terms other side added up squared and added up. So, that is what it is. So, if you look at that two equations the shear stress expression as well as the normal stress expression I have combined and separated the 2 theta terms right hand side and the non 2 theta same. To eliminate the 2 theta we are doing this manipulation and to, to get some expression what we what we get. So, that you can readily do. We have not changed anything. We have just uh, you know rearranged those uh, two equations and uh, squared them and added up. So, you can just verify that. So, this can be written like this, rewritten like this, uh, a simple rearrangement. And finally, you get this sigma minus sigma x plus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square which is equal to sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square. Okay. So, this equation is in the form of sigma minus a to the power 2 plus tau minus b square is equal to r square. So, this equation is this very familiar equation, equation of circle. Okay, so, where a is sigma x plus sigma y by 2, b is equal to 0 and r is square root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square. So, uh, this is this is exactly the equation of uh, the Mohr circle, the circle. So, this is representation, uh, this way of representing this uh, stress state of stress okay in two dimension uh, is called Mohr circle. So, we will see what is this Mohr circle uh, looks like. So, uh, you can look at the member uh, which is subjected to biaxial uh, tension sigma x and sigma y and then this is the shear stress acting for this situation. Um, and if it can be of arbitrary orientation, it will be rotated with respect to theta like this. So, for this situation, the Mohr circle is uh, drawn here. 
So, what is uh, involved in this Mohr circle drawing? So, the x axis is uh, uh, principal uh, normals, normal stress and y axis is shear stress. Okay. So, that is the axis labeling. This is positive and this is negative and this is positive and this is negative. And uh, suppose you take uh, the any you know um, sigma x which is uh, normal to this any plane if you can just uh, mark it uh, like this positive and negative um, a b if you if you mark it like this the intersection is uh, considered as a center okay intersection is the center of the circle and then what you see here is uh, d and e where the shear stress is 0 that means at these po two points it is pure um, principal stress right it is there's no shear stress and um, the the sigma x that is where we are interested so the you can see that uh, this is uh, this point sigma x and the corresponding uh, value here is this is tau. So, what you are seeing here is plus tau x y and this is minus tau x y. So, for example, if you uh, like I just mentioned yesterday. So, this shear stress will drive this this direction and this shear stress will drive this direction. So, this is a uh, a positive direction. So, the positive shear is here put here and then the negative is here and the maximum um, uh, I mean the sigma 1 which is uh, uh, algebraically largest uh, uh, normal stress is sigma 1 and what we are interested in plotting this is sigma x. So, the angle between this sigma 1 and sigma x is theta in more circle it is always at uh, the theta is plotted as a 2 theta not just theta. So, it is always 2 theta and then you can see that um, the angle between this sigma 1 and sigma x is 2 theta and this is a sigma 2 right sigma x and uh, and this one uh, this one is sigma x and this one is sigma y and this one is sigma 2 right and this is sigma 1 and what is the maximum? Maximum is here that is tau max right, but uh, we, we are interested in looking at this particular um, sigma normal stress uh, which is on an arbitrary uh, theta then uh, th this this diagram is useful because it can take any angle right. So, it, any angle it, it will plot here then you will see the corresponding uh, normal stress and the shear stress here. So, here it is negative shear stress, it is positive shear stress. So, depending upon the rotation uh, which sign we are looking at, so we can easily uh, relate this um, very nicely you can uh, represent the uh, normal and shear stress for a given orientation. So, that is the uh, usefulness of this state of stress. So, we can also look look at the equations which we have derived, but this will give much more uh, a visual uh, benefit, right? So, uh, grasping the uh, idea of how to see this uh, shear stress and uh, normal stress as a function of orientation for all the orientation you can see. So, this is for a two dimension. And uh, we now will slowly uh, move to uh, the state of stress in the three dimension. Okay. So, so far we just looked at biaxial. So, biaxial uh, when we say biaxial sigma 1 and sigma 2 uh, are supposed to be equal in magnitude right biaxial. And uh, in general the three dimensional state of stress consists of three unequal principal stresses right acting at a point. This is called a triaxial state of stress. So, you can have unequal uh, 
as principal stresses. Even in biaxial, uh, you can just check whether it is equal in magnitude or uh, unequal in magnitude uh, state of stress. But in general, this is uh, a three dimensional state, state of stress can be an unequal principal stresses. And if the two of the three principal stresses are equal, then the state of stress is known as cylindrical. So, even in the uh, triaxial state of stress, if out of three, if the two are equal in magnitude, the third is smaller than the other two, then it is called cylindrical. And if the all the three principal stresses are equal, then the state of stress is said to be hydrostatic or spherical. So, uh, these are the terms which is uh, very important and very basic and uh, you have to keep in mind while uh, describing the state of stress, especially in three dimension. Okay. So, we know uh, now triaxial state of stress, cylindrical state of stress and hydrostatic state of stress or spherical state of stress, how it will be, right. So, now uh, uh, we are just going to describe how to uh, get this uh, equations uh, for the state of stress in three dimension. It is uh, simply an extension of what we have just looked at uh, for a two dimension. So, I am not uh, going to spend more time on this, but just for a completion, I, I wanted to, wanted you to look at it because you should not ignore this. And uh, we are going to take up this uh, same uh, uh, kind of uh, Cartesian coordinate what we have done in two dimension. So, you, you just take this uh, uh, JKL plane, which is uh, uh, a plane which is just cut from in the cube, perfect cube, okay, you know, kind of 1, 1, 1 plane, okay. And then all the, uh, and then here is the sigma, uh, a normal stress which is coming out of this plane. And then uh, we can just uh, uh, look at all these, you know, these uh, normal stresses are uh, marked sigma x and sigma y with a 2 shear stress. So, this is what we have just seen yesterday. We need to resolve this uh, total stress into normal stress and shear stress when while we describing the state of stress in a three dimension. This is what we just looked at yesterday. So, like that we have just marked all this uh, shear stress components as well as the normal stress components. And um, yeah. So, what we are now trying to do is uh, just I will very briefly describe this. The components of sigma, so the component of sigma along each of the axis are capital S x, S y and S z. So, in, in a two dimensional we, if you go back and look at this uh, geometry what we looked at it, we took a component, uh, normal stress component, shear stress component on each direction. There it was just a line, right? We assume that is a line because we just took a projection of an oblique plane. Here it will be, it, since it is a three dimensional, it will be a plane. So, we will consider the plane, okay. So, uh, these are the components. The So, the S x is uh, sigma L, S y is equal to sigma m and S z is equal to sigma n. So, L, m, n are the direction cosines of sigma which it makes with the x, y, z coordinates, okay. That is a, that is one thing you have to remember. So, the components of the uh, stress, normal stress is uh, um, you have to multiply with the direction cosine. And uh, as I just said the 2D plane, what are the 2D planes here we have to think of? K, O, L, K, O, L is this K, O, L and that is the area of the triangle is A and this is belong to x direction. So, it is multiplied by L. So, area J O K, this plane that is associated with the Y. So, A M, okay. And then area J O L A M. So, this is a similar way what we have taken. So, now we will take uh, uh, the summation of the forces. Again, the uh, assumption is same, this body is assumed to be in equilibrium. So, 
we take the summation of forces on a particular direction and we equate it to 0, um, then we are interested in the sigma normal stress to this plane k j l and that area is a and uh, we are interested in l. So, sorry that is x direction. So, we are interested in x direction. So, that is why it is sigma a l. That means, uh, a stress into area. So, it gives a force, right. So, sim exactly similar to what we have done in the uh, two dimension. So, here also you just look at it without any uh, problem. So, if you sum it in this uh, direction, um, then sigma a l minus sigma x a l minus this is x component here and uh, minus tau y x a m minus tau z x a m. So, you look at this x component here. So, they are all summed up here and then equated to 0. Then it is a uh, next is very simple step rearrange them and then you get the expression like this. And similarly, you can do it for y direction and z direction. So, these are uh, three homogeneous linear equation and uh, the, the non-trivial solution is only can be found out from the uh, finding the determinant uh, value. So, you can just put them into uh, this determinant and what you can see is uh, the solution of the determinant results in a cubic equation in sigma. So, this is how the uh, cubic, the exp if you expand this determinant, you will get this expression. So, this all uh, very simple operation, but what you can now observe is uh, there is a combination of uh, st stress associated with each uh, each of these sigma. So, so what it is that means the the three roots of the above equation are three principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. Okay. So, this combination of uh, stresses associated with this coefficient of uh, sigma they are called they are not going to change uh, even if you uh, change the coordinate system any different coordinate system and that is why they are called um, invariants stress invariants so you should know what is stress invariant so these are the the combination of stress uh, coefficients of sigma uh, the first one invariant is sigma x plus sigma y and sigma z that is i1 and then i2 is written like this and then this is an i3 Okay. So, these are the three invariants uh, of this uh, uh, cubic uh, equation, okay. this is uh, the solution of this cubic equation. So, we will just refer this invariants uh, when we look at the, uh, when we apply this uh, concept into deformation much more, then you will get the, the grip of what are we talking about. Okay. So, let me number these and uh, what we have now seen here uh, so far is a normal stress sorry uh, principal stresses in three dimensions. Similarly, we can also look at the uh, normal and shear stress on any oblique plane whose normal has a direction cosines L, M, N in with respect to X, Y, Z axis. So, the one thing we have to remember here is the total stress on the plane will not be coaxial with a normal stress and so this condition uh, that exists there. Uh, so, uh, once again we uh, try to resolve this components in order to find this normal and shear stress, uh, this, this exercise we have done already. So, it is in three dimension, you have one more extra term here. So, The resolved component is S squared is equal to S x square and uh, S y square plus S z square and taking summation of forces in all these three directions, we arrive at the expression for orthogonal components of the total stress. So, this can be expanded it like this. So, we are trying to write to resolve this. Yeah. To find the normal stress sigma on oblique plane, it is necessary to determine the components of x, x, s, y, s, z in the direction of normal to the oblique plane. Thus, we write sigma is equal to s, x, l plus s, y, m plus s, z, n. So, you 
plug in all these values here and then you get this expression. Okay. So, again the magnitude of the shear stress on the oblique plane uh, can be found from tau square is equal to s square minus sigma square which comes from this right. So, so these are all simple uh, ways of looking at how we can uh, visualize this uh, normal and shear stress and then we'll, we, we can also work out little more detail to uh, get this expression. Let me, let me finish that. And why are we looking at it? Because uh, in a plasticity, we will be using uh, the shear stresses quite often. And it is also important to identify the planes on which the maximum and the principal shear stress occurs. So, that is that's another uh, idea. Um, so, we know that already, this, this, this aspect we know this, that is uh, tau max occurred on a plane halfway between the two principal planes. Therefore, it is easiest to define a principal shear stress in terms of three principal axes 1, 2, 3. Okay? And we can show that uh, this, uh, the previous uh, equations from there we can just, uh, we can also show that uh, the tau square is equal to in, in the form of uh, L m n, the so direction coefficients, right? For to to look at the principal planes, we can use these terms. And there is another way, um, since they are all uh, direction coefficients between normal to the oblique plane and the principal axis, the principal shear stresses occur for the following combinations of direction cosines that bisect the angle between the two of the three principal axes. So, this is very interesting. So, you, you can just specifically find out what combination of this direction cos cosines will give what type of uh, shear stress combinations, right? So, this is what it is. So, if you can plug in this uh, values of L m n, then you get this kind of uh, a 3 by 3 matrix where you can see, you know, what type of uh, shear stress uh, uh, or what type of shear plane uh, will be operating in if, if this is or the direction cosines. Okay? So, you will get uh, tau 1, tau 2 and tau 3. Okay? So, this you can just put it as a, in the form of uh, graphs we can put and I will just first show this and then we will talk. So, this is the uh, a pictorial representation of this uh, two uh, planes, right? So, according to the convention, this uh, I, we have already discussed, sigma 1 is the algebraically greatest principal stress and sigma 3 is the algebraically smallest. So, tau 2 has the largest value of shear stress and this is called maximum shear stress tau max. So, this is, this we know, this is very important and uh, we know. This is a maximum tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, if you look at the table also before, um, tau 2 is the maximum. So, these are the uh, three you know, set of principal planes, right? Actually, you can see that uh, um, uh, if, you, if you look at this uh, diagram, one thing is very clear for a given you know, pair of normal stresses there are a pair of you know principal uh, shear planes which you know bisects the uh, the normal stress right here here also it bisects and here also it bisects so uh, so you can also see that uh, similar things are happening here for the tau max and then this is the tau 2 so what what we are now trying to uh, convey through this, all this uh, derivation, uh, we are not only physically able to see how it is uh, the principal plane or principal plane where the principal stress acts, the principal plane where the principal shear stress acts and uh, how they are connected uh, angularly. These are all the things uh, we have uh, witnessed with this kind of exercise. Okay. It may, it may look little uh, boring or uh, tiresome, but uh, but if you look at uh, at the end of you know what you can just grasp out of all this 
a derivation then it is not a bad idea to go through this right. Okay, so this is about the uh, state of stress in three dimension. Mm -hmm.